doesn't matter if you work in an office, factory, on a construction site, warehouse or retail. The Ten Commandments for workplace safety are the same. And really, valuing safety is not only the responsibility of your employer, your own well-being is something you owe yourself. And when it all boils down to it, returning home safe every day must be important to you. How would your family cope without you? What if you couldn't work anymore? Or play cricket with the kids, walk the dog, mow the lawn? Or dress yourself in the morning? The most important reason for workplace safety is all about your life, your family and your friends. Seems like a pretty obvious concept, but what does this actually mean? It means... Wear your personal protective equipment, PPE. Use the right tools for the job. Don't assume that things like cleaning up are someone else's responsibility. Look after new and transferred employees. Also, take these safety ideas home with you. Follow these principles and you'll greatly reduce your chance of an injury. It also means looking out for your workmates. If they are not doing something safely, it doesn't hurt to speak up. Yeah, it's not for me to tell somebody how to do his job, but if I do pick somebody out for safety, it feels like I'm dobbing them in. Yeah, I understand, but it will feel much better to speak up than to sit beside someone in a hospital bed. You might disagree with this. You might think that accidents just happen. That's just the way it is. But let's think about it for a moment. Think of any accident that happened at your workplace. With the benefit of hindsight, could this accident have been prevented? I bet it could have been. We don't need to dwell on this commandment because they're there for a reason. They are part of your employment contract and you're expected to follow the rules. Everything we do has an element of risk. This commandment seeks to minimise that risk. Here is the five-part theory of the hierarchy of control for workplace safety. Number one, elimination. Rather than buying paint in heavy 20-litre pails, negotiate the supply of easy-to-handle 4-litre cans instead. Number two, substitution. Buy a less hazardous piece of equipment. For example, upgrade old grinders with ones with insulation to minimise vibration. Number three, engineering control. There are a lot of examples of engineering control in most workplaces. Here are two, guarding machines and automating a process in order to completely eliminate a risk. Number four, administrative control. It is not always possible to entirely remove the hazard. Administrative controls look at using procedures, training and signage to minimise the risks. This might include setting up a policy to rotate a job in order to reduce repetitive strain injury. Number five, PPE is the last line of defence in minimising hazards. If it is not possible to eliminate a hazard any other way, PPE can provide protection. For example, it might not be possible to eliminate all of the noisy equipment from a factory. Then hearing protection is obviously required. It is important to understand the right ways to eliminate risk out of your work environment. It is equally important to be diligent when you undertake a task. Before you start, Think about the risks. Don't let yourself be another injury statistic. Proactive. You might think it's one of those management terms. Teamwork. Another one of those tired old cliches. All the same, these are the essence of keeping us all safe at work. And the best way to look out for each other is as a team. We've already talked about taking responsibility for your own safety and that of your workmates. Now, let's take this idea a step further. Ask questions. It doesn't hurt to speak up. Suggest improvements. After all, you do your job for around eight hours a day. So, you know your working area better than anyone else. Keep talking safety talk. This is one of the best ways to make your workplace safer. Your company has a responsibility to provide safety training and you have the responsibility to do the right thing and to value your own safety. So, if you haven't been trained to do a task, then don't do it. If you're not licensed to use a piece of equipment, like a forklift for example, then don't drive it. The results of doing something that you're not trained to do can be life-changing. Quite a long time ago, a young man I knew 
was operating an overhead crane with a pendulum and pressing the buttons and lifting with a sea hook six, five, six tonne coils of steel. Had never been given any formal training, did not have a crane driver's certificate. Came within half a metre of hitting a person with a six tonne coil of steel. That young man's never forgotten it. Neither is the person that nearly got hit. At that point, the young man got away without a, a death on his conscience and without a job. He lost his job, but nobody lost their life. Shouldn't be driving machines without training. Shouldn't be doing any job without appropriate training. Causing between a massive 40 and 50% of all workplace injuries, manual handling justifies its own training course. As an introduction, here are five simple things to remember. Number one, if you don't have to lift it, don't. Use a lifting aid if one is available. Number two, if you do have to lift it, assess the lift before you start. Can you lift the item by yourself? What is the best orientation to lift it in? Is the path that you're going to carry it along free from obstructions? Number three, use correct lifting methods. For example, lift with your legs, not your back, and keep loads as close as possible to your body. Number four, to help reduce your risks of a workplace strain or sprain, get fit. Being in good physical condition has other obvious benefits, but also reduces the chance of a strain or sprain. Number five, act early. If you do feel soreness from a lift, do something about it right away. These principles also apply in the office. Reduce the chance of an office incident by having your workplace set out properly to minimise the chance of a strain injury. Shortcuts cause accidents. It's wise to choose the safest option, not the quickest, even just that once. Whether it's not putting on your gloves because you're nearly finished what you're doing, or climbing on a chair to put something on a shelf, instead of walking the extra minute for the stepladder. Shortcuts are a real problem. People think they can get away with it. They can't. It's a shortcut to hospital. In a lot of cases, shortcuts are just people being, to some extent, lazy, not following the correct procedures. It's not, it's not worth it. They're not going to save time if they're spending 14 weeks in hospital. Um, the shortcut is generally somebody thinks that they can get the job done quicker. In a lot of cases, they can't. It's best to follow the correct procedures. Clean up that spill. Keep the access ways clear. Dispose of oily rags. Put away the filing. Put your toys away. Make your bed. Johnny, I've already told you. Tidy up your room. You've been hearing it for probably longer than you care to remember. But the fact is, good housekeeping prevents accidents. Here is a simple checklist in case of a workplace incident. What do I do in an emergency? Where do I go in an evacuation? Who are the fire wardens? Who are the first aid officers? Where are the workplace facilities? Okay, let's review what you've seen today. The Ten Commandments of Workplace Safety are Number one, everyone is responsible for their own safety and the safety of others. Number two, all accidents are preventable. Number three, follow company rules, regulations and procedures. Number four, assess the risks, stop and think. Number five, be proactive about safety. Number six, if you're not trained, don't do it. Number seven, manual handling, manage the lift. Number eight, don't take shortcuts. Number nine, practice good housekeeping. And number 10, be prepared. So there they are, the 10 commandments for workplace safety. Some basic and straightforward concepts to work to, making your life safer. And remember, when it all boils down to it, this is about you returning home safe every day. <laughs>